How you guys doing? Hey, good morning, Ray. Welcome back. Uh, we will uh, go back over to Ross. Go ahead. All right, Ray. Good to see you, buddy. Uh, we've heard tons about the offensive line. Or sorry, about the defensive line and how deep it is. I want an honest answer from you. Like, how deep can it truly go? And how do you see the rotation kind of going? Like, are you going to be playing maybe a little bit less snaps than last year? Miles Murphy, a little less snaps because of the new depth, the new players you have along the line. Yeah, absolutely. I think when you talk about in terms of depth, I think we could go three to four deep this season, especially with the different packages in terms of like nickel, dime, and things like that. There's a lot of rotation, different packages and things like that. So guys are really being able to capitalize on their skill sets and what they bring. So I really think we could go four deep. And uh, I think, yeah, definitely me and Murph will have less snaps. And I think that will really help us when we get deep into the season, guys taking less snaps and uh, just having quality over quantity at the end of the day. And one player on the defensive line, maybe a young guy or someone you think is just jumping out, it's ready for kind of a breakout season. It's really impressed you this training camp. Man, I think all the guys are, are coming along great. You know, a guy in my room, tra in my spot, Travis, at that nose spot, I think he had a great spring, especially for coming right out of high school. And right when we started camp, I mean, he picked up right where he left off, and he's been improving day by day. And uh, I've been trying to help him out as much as I can. And uh, I think he could really help us this year, especially what he brings to the table with his size and athleticism. So I think he could he could really help us this year. Awesome. Thanks, man. Yeah. C.L. Brown. Hey, Ray, um, I was curious if you are using one of those uh, Guardian uh, helmet caps. No, I'm not, I'm not using one. OK, I, I, I'm doing a story on them and I was just curious. I, I, do you know much about them? Like, is there was there any kind of presentation of of these are available because they're supposed to help X, Y, Z? Yeah. Um... I mean, we introduced them last year. They came with, like, the uh, mouth guard study I think we did with the NFL. And I know I've been watching, like, the the hard knocks, and they're required for, like, all O-line and D-line in the NFL. I think it's for positions that have, like, contact every play. Um, but for me, I just I've, – I've never worn one. I really don't want to wear one. I hear a lot of guys in the NFL complaining about them. I hear they're heavy. So uh, I'm just going to stick to what I know unless somebody forces me to wear it. All right. Thank you. Yep. Andrew Jones? Hey, Ray, I know you missed a little bit of time here uh, the last few weeks, but when we talked to you in the winter after you decided to come back this year, at this juncture, have you been able to achieve what you thought you could achieve as far as adding a little bit more to your game, learning a little bit more, and better preparing yourself for having an opportunity at the next level? Yeah, I mean, it's it's been a process, and and the process of coming back after what I went through, uh, it hasn't been perfect. I had, had some time off, but... Uh, I trained very hard after after the injury and, and getting it fixed. And um, there were some bumps in the road, obviously, but uh, I've been grinding. I've been pushing myself and it hasn't been perfect, but I've been back. And uh, I definitely plan on having a lot better season. I feel a lot better overall. And uh, I'm excited to get to that week one game. Did that process getting healthy to where you're out there and you can play? Did that take a little longer than expected? And if so, what was the toughest part about that? Um, I mean, I was back and then and then I had, you know, another setback. And, and that's that's what happens at this position. You, you hit every play and, and things happen when you're training. And um, I mean, it just is what it is. I'm going to take this process for what it is. I'm going to keep grinding and um, I'm, I'm, I'm planning on playing this whole season, whatever comes with it. And, and that's the plan so far. Cool. Thank you. Yep. Adam Smith, go ahead. Ray, good to talk to you again, ma'am. Uh, just, I was wondering if, uh, with, with Gene Chizik, um, I was wondering if there was anything in his words of chisdom that resonates with you in particular, like, you know, I, he's obviously got a ton of sayings, like what, what, what do you like? Is there something in particular you really enjoy that he says? Like his, his tweets or in the meetings? Like I the, mean, the whatever you whatever you want to go with it seems like he's always got some platitude you know he's throwing out there or whatever like what like what do you hear him say that you're like okay all right all right oh, you yeah. know like um i mean he's always he's always kind of have the has the same message but he brings different quotes in the meetings i mean he had the one we had like a, a video with it with michael jordan where he was like sit at um sit at the tables with winners and it's different and that that was a cool little uh video he did 
And uh, it's just true, you know, those those guys that are ultra competitors that really that really care about the game, love the game, love to compete, you know, they're they're different in a good way and in a bad way. You know, some people some people would say that, but no, that was one thing that really stood out to me. But yeah, Chiz is super consistent and uh he's just a really he's a big motivator and gets us going every morning. So paint that scene for me if you don't mind. It's a little video of of guys sitting around a table like elite type dudes is that what it was no no it was just like he was sit at the table with winners and it's different and he just uh connected that to michael jordan with like a, a video that michael jordan did it was kind of like a little breaking down michael jordan and how how he went on his day to day and how he was with teammates and what he expected out of teammates and things like that and how he was a leader okay so winners move differently yep okay cool man thank you yep shelby swanson go ahead Hey, Shelby Swanson, Daily Tar Heel. Um, just want to take us back to the UNC um, like summer media day that you guys held. Um, you had this quote just talking about like losing to NC State, losing to South Carolina. You didn't want to leave Carolina like that. So you're planning on turning that around and hopefully winning the ACC this year. What do you think the D-line has to do to make that happen? I, I just think we have to dominate. We have to do our job first off, but uh, we have to dominate games and and affect the games in a positive way for our for our defense and for our team overall. And that's that's what the expectation in our room is. And, and that's the standard that we that we hold. So that's the plan going into this season. Awesome. Um, and a quick follow up. Um, could you take me to the exact moment that you decided to return to UNC and what that was like if there was like one moment? Uh, yeah, I, I had to sit down with Coach Brown, Coach Chizik, Coach Cross kind of talked to all of them about it and then just what my options were on going to the next level and and get my body right and everything like that. And I just felt that that was the best decision. I couldn't tell you the exact date or anything like that, but it, I just had to sit down with the, with the coaching staff and with Chiz coming in and sat down with him. All right, last question uh, for Ray. We'll uh, go back to Ross. Hey, Ray, at, at the nose tackle position, is the rotation kind of like you, Hester, um, Travis, is, is it Kedrick Mingley Jones also getting time there? Is that kind of how it goes or any other names we need to know? Yeah, um, KBJ bounces at three and nose. Um, Keyshawn Silver is at nose and tackle. They both bump. And even Trav will play a little bit tackle. We've got so much depth that we've got guys kind of cross training just in case you never know. Some Somebody gets sick, somebody gets hurt. Guys can play multiple spots. And then also with the different packages that we're installing for for third down, for long distance, things like that. Guys may bump the tackle. We may run a three-man front. So, I mean, but yeah, my spot we've got we've got me, KJ Hester, Trav, KBJ, Keyshawn, and then those guys also have been bumped to the three tech as well. Me and me and KJ have mostly just been playing nose guard. What's the what's the key difference when you're? I know that obviously they have different roles, but like. I mean, is a guy like Travis or, or uh, KJ uh, be, uh, Bingley able to – like, what What do you have to do differently in the three technique, different than the nose, that, that makes it maybe harder or difficult for a bigger guy to play that role? Um, I would say at nose guard, you know, things come very fast. You don't – like, the three tech, you get a lot more space. You get more of a two-way go. You get a lot on uh, one-on-ones on pass situations because the three tech is usually set to the back. So, we've got a lot – you get more of a two-way go. And it's more of a vertical thing at nose – it's more lateral to vertical because you're so tight and usually getting double teams and things like that. But um, yeah, it's great having guys that can play both positions and it, it just makes them more versatile and, and gives them a better opportunity to get on the field. Great. Thanks, man. Yep. All right, Ray. Thanks for time. Appreciate it. All right. Thanks.